worship you I worship you You are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you You are here Moving in a mist I worship you I worship you You are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you Hey, we make a miracle walker Promise keeper Light and the darkness My God, that is who you are We make a miracle walker Promise keeper Light and the darkness My God, that is about what God is doing you know and we encourage everyone all the viewers that is um, and that is on um, live with us today to, to, um, to just share you know to share this broadcast you know um, technology have it be where you can just click and share with a button right um, so everyone that is connected to you we encourage you to share um, especially those who are viewing back from back home from Trinidad we encourage you to um, uh, to also share with your family members back home. We encourage you to um, uh, comment in the comment button, engage with us, let us know um, where you're from, um, let us know how you're doing, and, and also encourage us because we too need encouragement. Your likes and your hearts is also appreciated. And we're just so thankful to have this platform to be here with you guys. I know it's, it's just a few things we mentioned here tonight but a few things is, is really a big part in what God has called us to do in a sense of um, being established in Trinidad and Tobago so please do keep us in prayer another thing I encourage you to do if you have a prayer request because a lot is going on now right a lot is going on a lot of people have lose loved ones you know a lot of people is out of jobs a lot of people have questions and unanswered and unanswered questions so we encourage you to put your prayer request in the comment box if you want to do it personally that's fine you can go on to our live current international ministry web page and you can um, inbox us personally because we really want to get connected to you and we won't really want to be able to pray alongside you as we all go through um, um, this difficult season and I just want to encourage you and let you know season was not meant to last a season is not meant to last a season is just that yes yeah, so I'm trying to say and I want you to know that um, Jesus cares he cares about you he cares of ex exactly where you are and and it doesn't matter what walk of life it from where you're from it doesn't matter what you have done it doesn't matter how big or small the problem is Jesus is the answer right so we encourage you to do that we really want to get in con connected with you in that way so after you have heard the word you know we pray to you and we walk alongside you as Jesus did for us right that is exactly what we need to do so thank you so much again for being here this evening we love you guys 
<laughs> we'll, and, and don't forget to share and like. And I'm going to allow my husband now to um, um, bring the word of God this evening. Thank you. Thank you, babe. Uh, sorry that you couldn't hear us. Um, I will welcome you again to Live Current International Ministries. Sorry about that. We apologize for, for the technical difficulties we've been having. Um, getting used to this, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna continue and push forward. I'm just gonna repeat what I said, and I'll have I'll have my wife um, I'll have my wife share next week uh, just what she shared again because I know most of you you only got the end part of it, um, but we'll reshare that. But I just want to share with you that you, um, we believe as live current that we're supposed to be life giving and world changing. Life giving and world changing. What does life giving mean? It means that that no matter where we're at in our life, no matter if uh, we haven't you haven't received Jesus yet, we want to see you grow in your life. Uh, if you have received Jesus, or or maybe you've known Jesus for a while and, and you've been walking with Him for a while, we want you to go deeper. What does deeper mean? It means to to grow past surface level. How many know that no matter what level you're at, if we're not growing, that we're dead. We are dead. If we're not growing, we're dead. We desire to see people grow in their spiritual life, work life, family life, personal life. And financially, we also desire to see people grow in their marriages. In every area of your life, we want to see uh, you grow, and we want to see see you grow in your life constantly and, and completely all the time. As you grow, what happens is then there should be an overflow, and that's part of being... Uh, uh, be, being world changing. When we're uh, when we're overflowing, it should affect people around us. What does overflowing mean? It means to fill a space to capacity and spread beyond its limits. Wherever we go, there should be an overflow of Jesus in our lives that affects people around us, in our home, in our workplaces, in our community, in our country, and all around the world. So as we're we're being as 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 a church, as we're equipping you to be life giving and as the the living water is flowing in you, we want to see that overflow. We want to see you affecting other people all around you. And uh, that's just a little bit about the church and the vision of Live Current International Ministries. Again, we apologize for for the sound at first. Um, where we, thank God we I think we worked it out, and hopefully you can hear us now. Um, I just want to share. I, I want to pray, um, but before I pray, I want to I want to say something um, to help those who might be meeting me, meeting us for the first time, but meeting me. Um, and hear me speak for the first time. Um, it's important as a person that you know who you are, right? And so um, you have to know who you are as a person, and you have to know the your purpose and the assignment that God has given you. And there's a threefold assignment that I believe God has given me. And so the way I preach and the way I teach, uh, it kind of goes within that assignment. So I'm, many people might be asking, well, for the first time, uh, you guys going on live, why are you preaching and teaching uh, this way? It should be nice. It, sh it shouldn't be ouch. You, shouldn't, you know, it should be pat, pat on the back and everything. That's not who I am. That's not who God created me to be. Uh, God has created me to be somebody who takes territory. And what does that mean? I take uh, when God assigns me to an area, uh, He begins to show me areas that need to be taken back for Him. And also, God uh, has caused me to be somebody who He wants me to align things, align things in the church, help align things in people's lives that are out of order. And and so a lot of the messages I preach are going to be in those areas. And then also, He has called me to be an activator. What to, uh, to activate people's passion, to activate people's zeal for God, their hunger for God, to activate uh, people's prayer life, to activate your uh, people's giftings. God has allowed me to see and help uh, to help activate those things in people's lives. So a lot of the messages you're going to receive, um, and at Live Current International Ministry are going to be in those areas because that's who God has created me to be. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care what people say about me. I'm going to do and be who God has created me to be. So on that note, uh, we're going to go ahead and pray. And I felt tonight that we should just intercede a little bit before we get into the message. We're just going to really take a time to pray um, for uh, Trinidad and Tobago. 
uh, for the Prime Minister, for the world, and, and people all over the world, because we're all in this crisis and this pandemic together. None of us have been left out of it, but we're all in it together. So let's just take a moment, wherever you're at, and before we get into the Word, I just feel like uh, we need to take a moment and just intercede for the nations and, and for each other. Jesus, we thank you, God. We thank you that no matter where we're at in this world, no matter where we're viewing from, if we're viewing from Trinidad, if we're viewing from the United States, or, or anywhere else in, the, in this world, God, we know that you are with us, that your presence is with us, God. We know that you're in control, God. God, we, we, we know that you see beyond what's going on, God. We, you, we know that you see and you know, God. God, we put our trust, we put our hope in you, God. God, we pray right now, God, for Prime Minister Raleigh, God. We pray, God, for your wisdom to be upon him, your wisdom to be upon his cabinet mem members, God, your wisdom to be, be on everyone who is, all his advisors, God. May your wisdom be upon him, God. May, may he hear your voice. May, may he understand and give him strategy, Lord God, for, for Trinidad and Tobago in this time, God. Give him your wisdom. Give him your knowledge, God. God, I pray that you'd put godly men and women around him, Lord God, who hear your voice to speak uh, directions directly from you, God, directly from the throne room, God. God, I pray for, for the every member of the parliament, God, uh, for the PNC and the UNC, God, that God, that they, there would not be division in this time, God, but God, they, they would begin to work together, Lord God, to get Trinidad and Tobago through this crisis, God. God, I pray for the people, Lord God, Many, Lord God, are financially crunched, God, at this time, God, and have lost their finances, God. God, it says in your word that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, God. We ask, God, that just as you you uh, took the, the, the loaves and the fishes, God, and you extended them to feed 5,000, God, that what little each person has, God, that you would extend it to get them through this crisis, God. God, we pray for those, God, all around the world, God. We pray for those in America, Lord God, and the leadership in America, all the leaderships all around the world, God. God, that they would begin to hear your voice, that they would begin to cry out to you, God, that they would begin to, to that you would begin to download your wisdom and put men and women of God around them to give them wisdom, God. We pray, Lord God, for their parliaments and, and their congresses and their senates, God. Whatever legal system they have, Lord God. Whatever people who are around them, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that your wisdom would begin to overflow inside of them, God. We pray that you put strategic people in their ears, God, to speak, thus saith the Lord to them, God, and that they would hear your voice and that they would obey to get this world through this crisis, God. God, I pray for people all throughout the world who are who are starving now, God. People all throughout the world, Lord God, who are financially crunched, God. Extend, Lord God, what they have, Lord God. Make the little much, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray tonight, God, no matter where... Uh, we're viewing from, Lord God, no matter where we're at, God, that your presence would overflow, God, that there'd be a manifestation of your glory, that there'd be a manifestation of your power, God, that, Lord God, there'd be an open heaven over each and every person, no matter if they're viewing from their home or their car, wherever they're viewing from, God, that there'd be a shifting in the atmosphere, God, that your presence would be manifested in, in their home, God, that they would feel you, they would sense you, God, that they would feel your love wrapping around them, God, they would feel your peace, God. Your peace that surpasses all, all understanding, God. That the joy of the Lord would be their strength, God. We pray, God, that you would just begin to move even now, God. I come against every distraction, everything that would take us away from, from what you are trying to say to us not, tonight, God. I pray that you would open our ears, that you would open our eyes, God, to hear and to see what you are doing, God. May our hearts be fertile ground to receive what you what we need to receive from you tonight, God. God, I pray, Lord, Lord God, right now, Lord God, you know each person, God, who is watching, each person who is going to watch on the replay, God, you know, God, what, uh, what their needs are, God. You know what their needs are. God, I pray that you would begin to answer their needs even now, God. God, you know, God, I pray that you would speak to them. Things that need to be broken in their lives would be broken. Things that need to be built up would be bro built up, God. Things that need to be provided for would be provided for, God. God, you know those who are watching tonight who might not know you, God. I pray tonight that they would come to know you 
and make you their friend, God. God, I thank you tonight, God, for what you're about to do. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go ahead and, and get into this message. And, and the title of this message is, uh, this is actually a series called Infected. This is part two. The title of this message is Strategies of the Religious Spirit. And before I read our scripture verse tonight, I just want to remind us what infection means, infected, and what a religious spirit is. So that as we read the scripture verse, you can begin to see what is going on. Okay? And infection. The state produced by the establishment of one or more pathogen agents in, in or on the body, a suitable host, right? Infected, having an infection contaminated with an infective agent, a bacteria, a virus, whatever it might be, okay? That's what infected means, that's what an infection is. What is, a religious, what is the religious spirit? A religious spirit substitutes relationship for tradition and works and possessions. What what you do becomes more important than your relationship with Jesus. A religious spirit idolizes tradition, roles, work, and possessions. Relationship with God is work, not joy. A religious spirit focuses on external instead of internal. It is prideful, judgmental, critical, controlling, and has non-biblical beliefs. That's really important to know. That they think are biblical. Okay, it is is it is an imitator. It imitates the Holy Spirit. It will imitate what a real Christian is. The religious spirit wants us to be comfortable. It does not have to be in the church or a part of the church to operate. All right. Um, now let's read our scripture for today. And I, the reason I want to read this scripture is I want us to understand that that. Um, the religious spirit affects everyone. It doesn't matter your title. It doesn't matter your position. It doesn't matter who you are in the church, outside the church. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you came from. It affects all of us. It affects all of us. Um, and and I just want to say this to, to, tonight, that it's very important that we understand this because this is something... Uh, that I believe that God is shifting the church right now. He He's trying to move the church out of and out of its comfortable position, out of its religious and uh, forms and fashions. And God is trying to shift us and move us. All right. So um, listen. Give us some feedback. Give us some amens. Give us some hallelujah. Give us some hearts. If it hurts, give us a ow or a wow. All right. Uh, make sure make sure you give us some feedback uh, because that helps us. And as you know, as a preacher, uh, when you're in front of a live audience, you're, you're, what helps you is hearing those amens and, and all those uh, ouches and all the different sounds. Uh, so give us some of those feedbacks. But let me give you a little background. We're in Acts 10 tonight. Let me give you, um, I'm going to be reading from verses 9 to 23. Um, and this is a story about Cornelius. Um, he was a Roman uh, soldier. He was a leader in the R Roman army. And in the first few verses in Romans 10, it says that he was praying to God. He, and as he was praying to God, he was a devout man. He gave to the poor. He, and he was praying to God. And an angel appeared to him and told him to send for, for Peter. And, and so he obeyed what God was saying. He sent for Peter. And let me give you some background to this because in those days, um, Romans were the conquerors. They conquered uh, Israel. They took over all of Israel. They, they were the rulers. And the J Jewish people did not, uh, they were not supposed to associate with Gentiles or those pe people who were not Jewish. They had certain rules. They had certain regulations. Even in what they ate, they were only supposed to eat certain things and certain foods. So, so there was some boundaries that were set up in the Jewish um, tr um, uh, religion. There were some boundaries that were set up. And, and we know that in Acts that Jesus had already died on the cross. He rose again. Um, from the grave, and now his uh, disciples at this point had received the Holy Spirit. They begin to uh, preach and teach, and there's there's many, there's thousands of people who came to know Jesus. And uh, Peter is here, and 
and we're going to pick it up in verse 9. Peter's here, and it says in verse 9, about noon, the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the rooftop to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. How many of you go to pray and you get hungry? All right, it happens to all of us, right? Even Peter, even the, the apostle, right? He, he, in verse 11, he saw heaven open and something like a large sheet being uh, let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of, of the air. Now, now, let me just stop there for one second and explain that he was only supposed to eat certain things. So there wasn't, it, it included the things that Peter wasn't supposed to eat. The things that by law and, and the Jewish faith they were not supposed to eat were included in this basket or in this, this sheet that was let down. In verse 13 it says, Then a voice told, told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. And he answered, Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times and immediately the sheet was, ta was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of this vision, the men sent from Cornelius uh, found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out asking if Simon who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. So get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to have you come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. The next day Peter started out with them and some of the brothers from Joppa went alongside. Now let me share a few stories um, with you before I get into the points, um, because I think all of us, um, um, all of us in our lives, um, if you have ever been to church, or maybe you haven't been to church, you've experienced some form of the religious spirit and of tradition, and we've seen many things go on. I remember uh, one of the reasons, let me share this, one of the reasons I feel uh, God has been dealing with me for the last two years about this is that I know that in Trinidad and Tobago, God showed me that there is a principality uh, of a religious spirit that sits over Trinidad and Tobago. So one of the things God is calling us to do is fight against that and break that over the, over Trinidad and Tobago. There, it's all over. It's not just in Trinidad and Tobago. It's all over. But some of the things, even when I've gone to Trinidad, all the churches I've gone to, I have not experienced that. They've been great churches that I've visited in Trinidad. But from many people in Trinidad, I've heard how they weren't allowed into church because of what they were wearing. Uh, they were only allowed to wear certain things, so on and so forth. And there was a lot of uh, rules and regulations that weren't necessarily biblical. And, 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 and sometimes we put things on people that are not biblical. I've experienced um, the religious spirit just in my own life. Um, I remember, I'm going to share a couple of stories with you just so you kind of have an understanding. I'm not trying to pick on, on one certain thing because this covers so many things, but just so you kind of get uh, uh, understanding it's not just about food, um, it's not just about clothes, it's not just about um, um, the rules and the regulations. It's, it's, it, there's, it's a vast thing that the religious spirit tries to, to how it tries to get in, but but I remember one Sunday morning when I was a youth pastor, I was um, at the church that I was at. We were sitting up on stage uh, during worship, and um, they're 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 going to have a um, baby dedication that Sunday, and and so the family was all sitting in the front row, and and some of them I I don't know if they've ever went to church before or not, um, but 
I'm not sure, but they were there sitting in the front front row. And I remember during worship, this one lady who was there in the front row, God was just dealing with her. I mean, she tears were coming down her eyes, um, and and God was just moving. The presence of God was flowing really thick with within the service, and and God was moving, and and God was ministering to her, and and I just started to pray and 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 begin to pray for her because I knew God wanted to do something in her life. I knew that God wanted to move um, in her life, and and um, so the worship ended. And, and I knew God, was, I mean, the Spirit of God was, was, was thick in the place, and I knew God was moving, and then they went to announcements. And, and it was about summer, it was coming close to summertime, just about in summertime, and they picked probably the, one of the nicest ladies in the church uh, to come and give an announcement. And let me explain this to you first. The, the lady who was in the front row, who God was dealing with, she was dressed very nicely. Um, she had on a very nice, um, I, don't, I can't remember if it was a dress or whatever, but I remember her top had a thin, a thin straps. It wasn't a thick strap, but it was thin straps. And um, like a spaghetti strap is what some people might call them. And she had uh, some tattoos and, and, and whatnot, but she it wasn't anything out, outrageous, right? So this lady gets up and she starts talking about what we're supposed to wear during summertime and how guys shouldn't wear cut off sleeves and we shouldn't be wearing shorts and, and girls shouldn't be wearing spaghetti straps. You know in that one moment that, that God went from dealing with this lady uh, and, and dealing with this lady and seeing and her being hungry and wanting to hear from God to a wall going up because of one announcement. One announcement. Sometimes it just takes one thing for, for, for that religious spirit uh, to, to use one thing to throw people off. And that's what the religious spirit does. It, and t here's the thing, that too many times we don't allow the Holy Spirit to do its job. See, the Holy Spirit, it says in, in the Bible, is our teacher. Too many times we want to teach instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to be the teacher. And we put our mouths on stuff and in things that we have no right to. And, and, and there's other churches that I went to that um, one church, we were, we were in an inner city church. I was a youth pastor there. And um, some of the older ladies would, would have um, these big cloths. And as some young ladies come in, now they don't know no better. They, they, they don't know any better, right? They come in with some short, uh, short uh, dresses on or whatever, and the ladies want to go and cover them up. Nobody was going to see anything really anyways because the chairs are blocking, you know, in the view. And, and uh, as soon as they would do that, some of them got up and left. So now what you did was you stepped in, and now God can't move. As soon as they would do that, you would see a, 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 swi uh, a switch flipped in, in their head. Right, and so we have to be very careful not to be ruled by a religious spirit to offend people and to see uh, what God wants to do uh, actually remove. Right, and I've seen this time and time again. And one of the what we're going to start talking about tonight, and we're going to look at these scripture verses, is the strategies of a religious spirit. Right, the stra the first strategy is the religious spirit wants us to trust in tradition rather than the voice of God. Look at verse verses 11 and 16 with me. It says, He saw heaven open, and something like a large sheep being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. Then the voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord. Peter replied, I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him again a second time, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken uh, back to heaven. Now let's, let me break this down. See, Peter grew up knowing that there was only certain things he was allowed to eat. There were certain things he was trained to eat and certain things he would not eat. He wouldn't eat pork. He wouldn't eat uh, lobster or shrimp or anything like that. He wasn't allowed to eat those things. So when he seen this sheet with all types of all types of um, all types of animals in it that were unclean, what they considered unclean and were not clean, and and this voice telling him, "Get up, Peter, kill and eat." Right? 
he says, now notice this. I want you to notice this in verse 14. He said, surely not, Lord. He knew who was speaking to him. But he decided not to listen because of his tradition. He knew that God was speaking to him. He understood he was having a vision. But what happened was this. He didn't listen because the religious spirit was at work and tradition was at work. And instead of listening to what God was telling him, instead of doing what God was telling him, he had allowed his tradition and what he knew to reign. How many times in our lives God is speaking to us, but because it doesn't fit the parameters of what we know God to be, or the parameters of our tradition or the parameters of what we were taught in church it's, it's outside of the box we don't listen that is exactly what the religious spirit tries to get us to do it tries to get us to stay in this tradition and in the box and what happens is this we stop listening to the voice of God and we we only focus on what we know we only and, and what happens is this this we stop growing we stop growing because we're not listening to the voice of God anymore. But we're stuck, stuck, and this is how we're supposed to dress going to church. This is what we're supposed to do. This is how we're supposed to talk. This is how we're supposed to look. And yet many of us, we play the game like we said last week. We go to church talking and looking and acting and dressing a certain way. But when we're outside of church, we, we do what we want to do. We do what we want to do. And that's the problem. See, see the, the religious spirit, is, it's one of its main strategies is this. It does not want us to listen to the voice of God. It does not want us to obey the voice of God, but obey everything that we, we, we know as church, everything that we know that it should be. And when God starts speaking to us, and when God starts teaching us different things and, and telling us to do something, we, we say, I, certainly not God. I have never done that, before, never done that, and I never will. But what if God is directing you and speaking to, to you so that you can grow and so that others can can come to know him. Listen, folks, we have to be very careful because the, the religious spirit is strategic. He's strategic. How many of you uh, know that football players, soccer players, they watch videos on the opponent to know how to attack and to know how to score a goal and they, they to, to zone in and see the weakness of the goalies to see see who's the strongest striker and, and to focus in on them on how to defend them. Listen, the religious spirit is watching you and he's trying to learn you and study you so he knows how to get you to come on his side and how he can attack you and get you from stop hearing and listening to the voice of God. There's too many churches that they have stopped listening to the voice of God. There's too many pastors. There's too many Christians. We have stopped listening to the voice of God. And all we do is we rely on what we already know, what we've already been taught. And many things we've been taught have been non-biblical. Many things we've been taught have been wrong. But we rely on that and we hold fast to that. And things need to change. This is the hour that we need to hear the voice of God and stop listening to the religious spirit and stop honing in on our traditions. Oh, if we don't have communion, we're going to die. Lord, have mercy. Some of us, some some people believe that if you're not baptized uh, in water, that you're not going to go to uh, go to heaven. Some people believe that if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're not going to go to heaven. The Bible does not say that. The Bible says all you have to do is confess your sins and ask Jesus to be Lord of your life, and you will go to heaven. But we teach all these things, and when the voice of God starts talking to us and and showing us in Scripture and and through other people that that this is not true, what happens is this: we Stop listening, and we won't do what God calls us to do. Number two, the religious spirit wants you to think that you have to earn your salvation. Let me explain this for a second. Peter, in, this, in the passage we just read, he, he is telling God no, because they, they were told from, from childhood that, that, 
that if you eat anything unclean, that you are unclean and you can't come before God. But we know that Jesus lives inside of us and, and that He has made and called things clean that are unclean. Amen? And But this is a problem for, for Peter because at this point, he's trying to earn his salvation when Jesus already gave it to him. Uh, verse 14 says, Surely not, Lord. Peter replied, I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. What, what is he saying? He's saying that, that I have to live by the law to, to get to heaven. I have to live by rules and regulations to get to heaven. But in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, For, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Let me break this down. We cannot try to earn our salvation. The religious spirit wants us to try to work for our salvation. That I, Let me break this down to you even farther. Many people think if you don't go to church, on, if you miss church on a Sunday, you're not going to heaven. That's not the case. Many people think if you, if you aren't doing something good for somebody, you're not going to go to heaven. Or many people think that the only way you can go to heaven is by doing good for other people. The more good you do, that's how you get to heaven. That's not the case. We cannot earn we cannot do works to get to heaven. Just because you're a deacon, just because you're an elder, just because you're a pastor, just because you are a ministry leader, just be, because you do good things for, for, for all types of different people does not mean you're going to heaven. We cannot earn our way to heaven. It's only by Jesus Christ, it's only by having faith in Him can we get to heaven. But Peter here, he said, I won't eat anything because I have never done that and I want to make sure I get to heaven. Galatians 2.16 says this, Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have to believe in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Because by works all the law of the law, no one will be justified. So by what we do, we cannot be justified. Only by Jesus and receiving Jesus as, as crucified and resurrected as our Lord and our Savior can we be made right and justified because He justified us when He died on the cross for our sins. Galatians 2 and 21. And I want you to hear this scripture verse because this scripture verse is really important for each and every one of us because this is what we do. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. So in other words, if we think that all we have to do is do good things, all we have to do is be good, all we have to do is, do, is follow every rule and regulation and we'll get to heaven, then why did Christ have to die? We're saying that Christ died for nothing when we think that we can earn our salvation. And the religious spirit wants us to think that we can earn our salvation and that it's not through Jesus Christ. But that is a lie of the enemy. We have to understand that it's only through Jesus Christ can we be saved and can we have salvation. It is not through our works. So stop trying to earn something. Stop trying to prove something. Stop trying to prove that you're righteous and holy because there's only one person who makes you righteous and holy and that's Jesus. Yes, there are steps and things that we have to do and, and growing deeper in our relationship with Christ. Yes, we have to do good things. Yes, but that is not how we get to heaven. It's not the only way. The religion, number three, the religious spirit wants you to be comfortable where you are at. See, too many of us are comfortable right where we're at. Again, Peter said, I have never eaten anything impure. He was comfortable with not eating anything impure. He was comfortable uh, with, with sticking to the rules and regulations. He was comfortable. He didn't want to move outside of the box. Well, I'm here to tell you, God has already started moving us outside of the box because we're doing church live. Nobody's at church, so the box has been broken. The box has been shattered. We are here, God is saying, it's time to be uncomfortable. It is time uh, to break out of this religious spirit. It's time to think 
think that just going to church on a Sunday will get you to heaven. It's time to have a relationship with Him. It's time to, to move out of your comfort zone and do something different. Now, Peter was taught all of his life not to eat anything unclean. So he was very uncomfortable when he was told to kill and, and to eat. We see in Leviticus 11, the rules and the regulations, they weren't even allowed to eat anything with blood. It had to be cooked the whole way through. So even for him to be told to just kill and eat and, and, and not cook it, he didn't say kill, eat, and cook. He just said kill and eat. That was like, no way, Jose. I'm not going to do that because I have never done that. I'm in my comfort zone. And, and I don't want to be moved out of that because it, I'm afraid if I'm moved out of my comfort zone, I might do something wrong and I might not go to, to heaven. I, 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 might, I might be sinning and, and, and if I don't go to heaven, uh, if I do this and, and I move outside of the box, uh, I don't know. I'm, I feel comfortable where I'm at. Too many of us, we're comfortable doing nothing. Too many of us, the Holy Spirit, or the spirit of religion, has us comfortable in our seats doing nothing. And God has called you to st step up. God has called you to do something uh, in your community. He's called you to do something in your church. He's called you to speak to your neighbor about Him. He's called you to speak to, to your em employer or employee about Him. And you're too comfortable doing nothing. And that's exactly where the religious spirit wants us and has us. Many times we are not comfortable with who God is speaking through. And so we can't receive what God is saying. See, many times we hear a message from a person like myself or somebody else, and because it's coming from somebody we're not used to or the, the way they speak or, or, or they, they don't sing when they speak or they don't go, ah, 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 when, when, when they speak, we don't receive it. Because we're not comfortable, or maybe it's the way they look, or, 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 or the way they dress. It might be because, oh my goodness, they might have a tattoo, or, 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 or they, they're not wearing a suit. Oh my goodness, I'm not comfortable with that person speaking it be, be, because of this. Can I say in Mark 6, 1 and 5, Jesus, it says this, uh, Jesus left, left there and went to his, his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get this thing, uh, these things? They asked, what this, what's, what this wisdom that has been given him, that he even does miracles? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't these his sisters here with us? And they, uh, and they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, only in his home, hometown, among his relatives, and in, in his own house is a prophet without honor. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick, people and heal them and he was amazed at their lack of faith see many of us are uncomfortable with who is speaking and and, and that's why we can't receive what God is saying because we're comfortable only with certain people speaking to us if it's not T.D. Jakes or Joel Osteen or, or whoever if they don't sound like them, look like them if they're not dressed a certain way if they don't talk a certain way we can't receive what God is saying to us can I tell you that is a religious spirit and God is here today to break that off of your life listen, if they don't sound like your pastor they can still be preaching the, the word of God and, and you might need to listen to hear the voice of God because God might be saying something to, to you break out of your comfort zone because that is a religious spirit upon you number four the religious spirit wants to stop the move of God. Listen, one of the main things, why does he not want us to hear his voice? Why does he not, uh, why does he want us to be stuck in our comfort zone? Why does he want us to try to earn our salvation? Because he wants to stop the move of God. He wants to stop the move of God. In Acts 10, 27 through 28, uh, Remember, these men came from Cornelius' house and they took Peter back to Cornelius' Cornelius' house who was a Gentile. See, the religious spirit didn't want Peter to go. He wanted Peter to stay there. He didn't want him, him to go underneath the Gentile's roof. He, and, but Peter realized that God told him it's time to go. Peter heard the voice of God and he listened. At first he denied it, but then he listened. And in verse 27 it says this, 
talking with Peter, uh, Peter, he went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are all well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile or visit him. But God has shown me that I should not call any man impure or unclean. In verse 34 and 36 it says, Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear Him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Verses 44 and 48. We're skipping ahead a little bit. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard this message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the, the Holy Spirit spirit just at just as we have so he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days can I say this the religious spirit wants to stop us in our tracks because if we listen to the voice of God if we break out of our comfort zone if we understand that we can't earn our salvation listen God will move in our lives people will come to know him it will break there will be a revival that breaks out but we have to break out of this religious spirit for a revival to happen it will not happen it will not happen if we're still stuck in the same box when this whole pandemic and crisis is done. If we go back to church as usual, if we go back to our religious formalities and our, our, religi our religious boxes, the revival will not happen. But God wants to move in a mighty and powerful way. And the religious spirit has been trying to stop a move of God for centuries and thousands and thousands of years. And it's time for the church to arise and break out of the religious spirit. Even with Peter and John after after they had healed the, the, the man in front of the temple and they were beaten and thrown in jail. They warned Peter and John. The Pharisees did. Uh, the religious leaders warned them, don't preach in the name of Jesus anymore. And they said, we will continue to preach in the name of Jesus because there was a move about to take place. There was something about ready to hap happen. And we've seen that God began to move. Revival broke out all over the land. And how many know that God is about ready to move after this pandemic is done? If we begin to hear God's voice, if we begin to understand Understand we can't earn our salvation if we break out of the, the, our comfort zones and allow God to use us and move. There will be a great revival. But the religious spirit will try to do this, and he's already trying to do this. The, re, the other strategy is this, that he wants to bring division. He wants to bring division. How many of you know that, that you know a church is full of the religious spirit when there is division? And people have the religious spirit when all they want to do is bring division. We're going to talk in a few weeks. We're going to talk a little bit more about the buddies of the religious spirit. Who teams up and, and who's the team of the religious spirit and who works with the religious spirit. But but we see here in Acts 11. This is this is a continuation of Acts 10. It says it says that it says soon the news reached the apostles and the other believers in Judea that the Gentiles had received the word of God. But when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, the Jews believe, believers criticized him. You entered the home of a Gentile, <gasps> and even at ate with them, they said. See, right here, before, listen, where Peter went from where he was and to Judea, it was a couple days travel. Before Peter even got back to Judea, to the area he was, the news already reached back and they started criticizing him. They started trying to bring division because the religious spirit always wants to bring division. It always wants... Man, you know how many churches have split over the stupidest things? You know how many people have, have stopped going to church over stupidness? You know why? Because the religious spirit had begun to work. The religious spirit had begun to operate and started taking control. They stopped listening to the Holy Spirit and were operating in a religious spirit. Galatians 2, 3, and 5 says this, But even Titus, who was with me, was not forced to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. Yet because of false brothers secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have in Christ Jesus, 
so that they might bring us into slavery. To them we did not yield in submission, even more, even for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. Even in the early church, the, that religious spirit was trying to operate, it was trying to work, it was trying to bring in division, and, and we cannot submit to it, not even for a moment. We can't condone it. We have to stick to the truth of the gospel that we may preserve people, that we may preserve the church, and do what God has called us to do. Let me say this. One of the biggest ways right now that, that the religious spirit is operating and how it's operating is, is through politics. Let me break this down. We have become so religious within our politics that our political views bring division in our lives and it brings division in the church. I don't care if you're for PNC or UNC. I don't care if you're for the Republicans or Democrats. It doesn't matter. If you're so for somebody that you religiously cannot hear facts or, or cannot understand anything, then you have a problem. If you cannot tow the middle line, then you are, uh, there's been division, division, division. Listen, many churches, many people in churches have left and many churches have broken up because of politics. And that is just stupidness. We have to learn we have to learn. We have to learn how to uh, toe the middle line. We have to learn as a church how to be a bridge. We our uh, our political views are not important. What is important is the word of God. We have to stick to it. But the religious spirit wants to bring all that in. The religious spirit want, wants to begin to confuse us and divide us through politics. And that's what's going on in every country right now. And and even in Trinidad and Tobago, that's what what's going on. But we're praying against that we're praying against that spirit of division and that spirit of division that religious spirit is not going to break and there's going to be common ground and we're going to get through this crisis together amen all right so how do we how do we break the uh, the barriers of the religious spirit or how do we break these strategies of the re re religious spirit and some of this is, w w Right away is number one. Um, we're going to go back over some of what we already talked about. But number one, we, we have to know the voice of God. Not just know the voice of God, but we have to obey it. And we see here that in, in Acts uh, 10, uh, 13 through 23, that, that Peter, he, he knew who was speaking to him. He knew that the Lord, because he said, uh, Lord, I have never done this. So he knew who was speaking to him, but he decided uh, not to obey. And it wasn't until he was going over the vision, he was trying to understand it, and God spoke to him and said, go with these men. It wasn't until that point did he start to begin to understand that and, and listen to the voice of God because he went with them. And then say he hesitated. He said, stay the night here and then I'm going to go with you. And he went with them. He understood to break what the religious spirit was trying to do in his life. He understood he had to obey the voice of God. Many of us do not obey the voice of God. And if we want to break through some of the, the struggles and some of the areas and where we're at, we have to begin to listen to the voice of God. Some of our problem is we haven't grown from the day we've, we've come to know Jesus or we haven't grown in our life or in our spiritual walk with Jesus because we have not been listening to the voice of God. We've been listening to rules, tradition, and men. But we haven't been listening to the voice of God. So what are some ways uh, to, that we hear or, or to listen to the voice of God? What are some ways that we hear the voice of God? Because many of you are like, well, how do I listen to the voice of God? How does that happen, right? Number one way, our number one way is our Bible, right? Our Bible is the number one way. Now, Peter, I, I want to explain this to you. Peter had uh, the Pentateuch, which is the f uh, first five books of the Bible, and 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 they had the prophets and and and, and the old uh, what's mainly in the Old Testament, some of the writings from the prophets. So he had those things. He might not have been trained in all of it, but he knew them for for the most part. But in Mark se seven. 7, 17 through 23, Jesus said to his disciples, when Peter was there, Peter was there with him, Jesus said, it's not what enters a man that makes a man unclean, but it's what's come out or what's in his heart that makes a, a man unclean. And in that, ver in that those verses, Jesus was declaring that food, that all food was clean. 
See, see, Peter, Peter listened to that. He heard that. And, and he even was with Jesus and John 4 when they went into Samaria. And they weren't supposed to be um, in Samaria or even going around Samaria. In fact, most of the times when they would travel, they would go a mile out of their way to go around Samaria because Samaritans were half Jewish and half Gentile. And so the Jewish people, it was a r very racial thing. They would not they would not sit or be anywhere around the Jewish people. Not only that, they went through there, but Jesus talked to a woman. In those days, a man would not talk to the woman without her husband present. And Jesus, not only did he, he talk to a, a woman and get a drink from a Samaritan woman, uh, this should have, Peter should have known all this. Number one, we know that, that Jesus is the Word, right? And in and and, and John 1, it says Jesus is the Word. So by him being with Jesus, uh, uh, Peter knew the Word. He knew the Word. Isaiah 49 and 6, Jesus was called the light to the Gentiles, okay? So d d Peter should have known some of this. Peter could have studied his Word. He, 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 he could have understood this, but... But many times when God is speaking to us, we have to study our word. Too many of us, we listen to the preacher, we listen to what we're taught, but we know we don't go back to study for our own. Many of us are taught non-biblical things or th things from the Bible that are twisted, but we know, never go back to study and double check. We never go back to, to study and really find out what is God saying. The main way that God speaks to us is through His Word. So Peter should have already known that, that it was okay, that the, this food was clean. He should have already known that, that he was supposed to go to the Gentiles, but, but he didn't. But this is one of the main ways we study the Word of God is through our Bible. Number two, we see this in this passage, dreams and visions. God speaks to us through dreams and visions. I don't have time to go through all of these Step by step. God also speaks to us in our minds or through our thought processes, okay? He speaks to us uh, through audible vo the audible voice of God. You might hear God as, as Samuel did. He thought it was Elijah, uh, sp or Eli speaking to him. And, and he heard, he and he ran to Eli. That was the audible voice of God. Many times for me, God will speak to me through, uh, in my mind or through my pro thought process. And it would be a thought that I know is not my own thought. And, and I know that it's God. And sometimes the only way I, I, the way I begin to develop that is just stepping out in it and following what, what those thoughts and, and maybe speaking it out and then God will show me, yes, that was me, or no, it wasn't. Uh, but those are some ways that God speaks to us. Also, God speaks to us through angels, as he did through um, in Cornelius. He spoke to Cornelius through an angel and told him to go get Peter. So there's many ways that God speaks to us, but all these things have to align. If God speaks to you in your mind audibly through an angel, if he speaks to you through dreams and visions, they all have to align back to the Word of God. They, everything, we have to filter everything through the Word of God. So it's very important that to, to break the religious spirit is listening to the voice of God, understanding, hearing the voice of God, following, obeying the voice of God, and the religious spirit will start, start to break. Too many times in churches, we don't listen to the voice of God. Listen, I had a situation in one of the churches uh, that I was at and they wanted to tell me how to dress and I said, I'm sorry, but that's not what God's speaking to me. And I could align it right to the Word of God and I said, I'm not going to dress that way. And it wasn't, I was I was the pastor of the church. Uh, I was the pastor. So it wasn't like the, the lead pastor. Those who were over me were telling me that. It was con people from the congregation. I said, no, that's not the case. Because this is what God is speaking to me. And I'm going to follow his voice. And I can back it up with scripture. Ver uh, scripture ver so you have to be very careful how the religious spirit begins to operate in our lives. And then here's the other thing. We can never, number two. Breaking the religious spirit. We can never get comfortable in our relationship with God. If you rely on a routine uh, in, in your relationship, in your devotional time or whatever, you need to change it up sometimes. Listen, through the outless crisis, I have been worshiping a lot more than what I was before because I felt there needed to be a shift. I pulled out my guitar. I started just worshiping with my guitar and singing with my, my guitar. I, hadn't had, I haven't done that in a long time because I, I knew I needed to shift something. Something had to shift. I had to give more praise and no more worship during this time. And then some of us, we just 
just need to add more time reading or more time praying, or worshiping, more time worshiping, or go, going after God more. Some of us, we, we just don't go after God more. See, some of us just get satisfied with just where we're at. See, the religious spirit wants us to be satisfied at the status quo. The religious spirit wants us to be satisfied where we're at. It wants us to stop growing because if we continue to grow, we become dangerous to the enemy. If we continue to grow, we are dangerous. Some of you out there, God is saying to you right now, He is saying you have stopped growing. He is saying you have been comfortable. You have been become satisfied where you're at in your relationship with Him. And He's saying it is time to break that off of you, to break that off of you. I because I want to make you dangerous. I want to make you dangerous. The enemy, the enemy fears you, and he has lulled you to sleep. And he's telling you that I want to make you dangerous to him. So some of you, you have you have pulled back on some of the things you've been doing for God. You have become comfortable where you're at. Maybe you were a worshiper before and you stopped worshiping. Maybe you were an intercessor before and you haven't been interceding like you have been were before. Maybe you have been you were somebody who really studied the Word of God. You pulled back on it. God is saying you need to go back to, to those things. You need to go deeper. Don't be satisfied because I want you to be dangerous to the enemy. I want you to be dangerous. Some of you, God is saying, you. I want you to go deeper. I want you to go more because I need you to be dangerous. But you've allowed this religious spirit to make you comfortable and lull you to sleep. It's time to get out of your comfort zone. It's time to break, break out of the box and do the things God is telling you to do. And listen to his voice and break out. It's time to break out. It's time, it's time to be dangerous to the enemy enemy. Amen? Here, here's number three. Don't allow tradition. See, too many of us allow our tradition to control you. Um, let, let, man, I want to touch on some stuff here. I really want to touch on some stuff here. But some of you might start tuning me out. I might not get any any likes or any hearts. I, I might just get some ouches if I start touching on some stuff here. But but listen, there's I, I've been to so many churches um, where they are, the, the Lord help me. The dress is so important. It's like if you don't dress right, you can't come to church. If you don't dress right, right, the Holy Spirit's not going to show up. If you don't dress right, the the presence of God isn't going to be here. Uh, if, if, if you're a woman, you have to wear wear a skirt. You can't wear pants or you have to put a hat. Whatever it may be. Whatever the circumstance may be. Can I tell you, that is a tradition trying to control you. And, and, and once we become controlled, we become comfortable. Once we become controlled, we become comfortable being controlled. And once we allow tradition and things to control us, we, we take the control, uh, we take the hand of God off of our lives, and now we're no longer controlled by God. We're no longer controlled by the Holy Spirit, but we're controlled by the things around us, the traditions around us. If we don't have communion on first Sunday or second Sunday, all hell's going to break loose, and, and God is not going to move. If somebody does doesn't um, speak in tongues and prophesy. If the Holy Spirit hasn't moved. If if somebody if there's not a, a praise dance breakout, the Holy Spirit hasn't moved. If, if somebody isn't shouting a Santo 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 and slapping a tambourine, the Holy Spirit hasn't moved. That's tradition. A lot of times, sometimes it's not the Holy Spirit moving. Sometimes it's just tradition. And because that doesn't happen in our churches, we have we think God didn't move. Can I say sometimes that's just just tradition. See, sometimes we have to understand that God moves in different ways. Sometimes He moves just in the quietness and nobody can say a word, but we're in all of God. We're in all of the power of God. We're in all of who He is and nobody can say a word but be silent. That is when sometimes God moves and, and sometimes He moves in our dances. Sometimes He moves when we speak in tongues and prophesy. Sometimes He moves when we're, 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 we're slapping a tambourine and shouting, Santo, Santo, Santo. Sometimes He moves in those ways Yes, He does move in those ways. But when we, they become tradition, and we have to do it every Sunday, because if we don't do it every Sunday, God's not moving, then we're, are we operating in, in, a, in the Holy Spirit, or are we operating in a spirit of tradition and of religion? 
See, these are things we have to begin to start questioning. These are things that we have to begin to start answering. If we don't wear a suit and tie, or if as a woman we wear pants, is the Holy Spirit not going to move? No, I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. So if you see it in the Bible, prove it to me, because I don't see it. I am sorry to tell you, we have been listening to too many non-biblical truths and allowing uh, the church system and, and these people, these pastors and all types of people to control and instead of allowing the Holy Spirit and the true biblical people, men and women of God, to teach us and to, to teach us true theology and biblical truths, but we allow everything else to control us, and we're controlled by a religious spirit. We need to break out of it. We cannot allow tradition to control us, but we have to allow the Holy Spirit and God to control us, because we trust in Him and Him alone. Number four, and I'm getting, I'm just about done. Number four, trust in the finished work of the cross. Oh, let me say that again. Some of us need to trust that what Jesus did on the cross is done. We don't have to do anything else. We do not have to do anything else to earn our salvation. What Jesus did on the cross, the finished work of Jesus Christ, it is done. We don't have to try to, 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 to um, earn or work for our salvation. Just build our relationship with Jesus. Man, I'm telling you right now, if you just work on your relationship with Jesus, you just build your relationship with Jesus, I'm telling you, you're not going to be concerned about about uh, what everybody else is doing, uh, what John is doing next door, and how he's feeding the homeless and everybody else. Yes, those are good things to do, and we need to do those things, but too many times we do it because we're trying to earn our way to our salvation or earn our way to heaven and we don't have to do that God is saying we need to trust in what he did for us at the cross we have to trust in what he did for us at the cross number five we have to make sure that uh, we are not against what God is doing even even if we do not understand it or it goes against our tradition what or, or what we know as church or Christianity. Many times, even in this day right now, we are doing things that most churches would say don't do. Most people are saying don't be on Facebook. There was churches, people I know, that would say, oh, Facebook is from the devil. Facebook is from the devil. All this is from the devil. Guess what? It's our only way to have church right now. One of our only ways to have church right now. See, we have to not allow things uh, that, that we might think that are against God uh, to, to, to hold us back from what God is really saying. See, we have to make sure that, that we are not against what God is doing. Many times we go against what God is doing because it doesn't line up with church. It doesn't line up with our Christianity. It doesn't align up, but it aligns with the gospel. It aligns with the Bible, but it doesn't align to, to the way we view things. It doesn't align to, to the perception of, of what we have been taught. Oh my goodness. If it's not amazing grace and we're, uh, how sweet the sound we're singing, then God isn't moving. If we're not singing Kumbaya, my Lord, God's not moving. Please help me, Jesus. We have to break out of these traditions and we have to allow God to really speak to us. We have to allow God to really move in our lives and we have to begin to operate and move with Him and outside of the box of the church and outside of these traditions and we have to make sure we are moving with God and not against God. Listen, we all fight the religious spirit. Each and every one of us. It is a constant battle. I'm telling you, it is a constant battle that we're going to continue to fight until we go to be with Jesus. It is a battle. But we are here fighting together. This is why I wanted to share this with you tonight because because we all go through this. Listen, Peter, the Apostle Peter, who Jesus said, on this rock, I will build my church. He was fighting against it. Even in Galatians, he was fighting against it. Read Galatians 2. He was constantly fighting against this. In fact, Paul had to correct them in Galatians 2. Paul had to bring correction to Peter. And, and, and we see this, that we're all fighting against this. Sometimes, sometimes even thinking we are not religious, we become religious and trying not to be religious. Let me say that again. Some of us become religious and thinking that we're not religious and trying not to be religious. Let me break this down for you. Sometimes, for me, example. Let me get, I'll use myself as a perfect example. You see what I'm wearing. This is how I usually 
dress in church, blue jeans, t-shirt, sneakers. That's me. That's who I am. That's who we are. Uh, you come to Live Current International Ministries, if you want to wear a suit, wear a suit. If you want to wear blue jeans and, and t-shirt, wear blue jeans and t-shirt. You want to wear a dress, wear a dress. However you want to dress, just don't come in your carnival outfit. That's all I ask. Okay? Uh, uh, I, I'm playing. I'm playing with you. But, but seriously, seriously, dress how you are. See, even for me, even though this is how I dress, if I say, if somebody, a pastor asks me to come speak to at their church, and they ask me not to uh, wear blue jeans and t-shirt, but to put on a suit. If I don't do that, then I'm still stuck in the religious spirit. Because I'm saying what I wear is more important than what God has to say. I'm saying uh, what I wear is more important than the, the assignment that God has for me at that church. And see, too many times we put, um, even if we're trying not to be religious, we make ourselves religious and trying not to be religious. We can be religious and trying not to be religious. Okay, Our relationship with God and knowing His voice is the most important thing we have in beating the religious spirit. We always have to be growing and breaking down the walls of legalism in our life and in our relationship with God. This does not mean we have to have the, have the right to sin. This, it, it, we're not giving ourselves right to sin or not to do good things. That's not what we're saying here. Okay? But God doesn't want us to us in a rut because a rut is just a grave with its size kicked out. That is where the religious spirit wants us. He wants us in a rut and eventually the rut j just becomes a grave. And, and many of us, we have been sitting in the rut, we have been sitting in the grave and God wants us to break out of it. God wants us to hear His voice. God wants us to go deeper in Him, to break out of our comfort zone, to not try to earn our salvation. He wants us to... to, to to, to step out, to not bring division, to get past these things that divide us and work together as one, work together as a team. I don't know about you, and I don't know where you're at tonight, but I know one thing for sure. I know one thing for sure, that the most important thing to all of us should be our relationship with God. The most important thing to all of us should be how we're communicating and not to be stuck. Our relationship with God is more important than going to church. Our relationship with God is more important than being at church on Sunday. You can go to church on Sunday, every Sunday, and still not have a relationship with God. You can go to church every Sunday, and when you die, you, you still go to hell. Your relationship with God is the most important thing. And the religious spirit wants to break that. He wants you to stop hearing God's voice. He wants you to stop, become comfortable in being at the status quo. But my prayer tonight is this. That we, as, as people, we begin to break out of this religious spirit. We begin to listen to the voice of God. We begin to break down the walls and the barriers. And we begin to allow God to speak to us. And, and maybe you're, you're listening tonight and you say, I, I, I've seen that in church. I, I've been to church and I stopped going to church because I've seen exactly what you're talking about. In, in fact, it made me so sick. And, and when I look at the Bible, I don't see the church that I see in the Bible. I don't see it when I go to church. And so I stopped going to church. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight that, that live current will not be that type of church. I'm here to tell you tonight that, that we, uh, we will be a church that aligns with the Bible of God. That we will be a church that, that, that aligns in every way that we can possible and, and, and with the Bible. And, and, and we will align to the scripture completely and fully. And I'm sorry, I want to I wanna ask you to forgive Forgive as 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 the body of Christ. I want you. I want to say I'm sorry for your experience. I want to say I want to ask that you would forgive us for for as a body of Christ for making you feel that way and treating you that way. And I I, I want to ask you tonight if that's you. I, I I want to pray for you tonight. But maybe you're uh, joining us tonight or on the replay. You've never asked Jesus into your life and you would like to do that. And and you want to start this walk in this relationship with Jesus that we've been talking about. I want to give you that opportunity right now.
If that's you, I just want you to repeat after me. And, and again, these are words that we're saying just as a confession, just to ask Jesus in. The, the real start of your relationship is walking it out, is building that relationship with Jesus. And if you pray this prayer with me tonight, I want you to, to um, inbox us. I want you to email us. Our email is on our Facebook page. E email us at Live Current. Enter, uh, live current uh, int at gmail.com uh, email us and we'll send something to you to help you begin your journey uh, with God and get you uh, started on that relationship with God but if, if that's you tonight and you want want to pray and ask Jesus into your life I just ask that you would close your eyes wherever you're at and you just repeat after me and say Jesus I want you to be my best friend forgive me of my sins I confess that I have sinned and fallen short of, of who you have called me to be. Forgive me, God. And I want you to come and live in my life. I want to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Can I tell you, if you prayed that prayer with me tonight, the heavens are throwing a party, party for you like no birthday party you've ever experienced. It's a party beyond what you think carnival might be. It's way beyond that. And God, it, people are celebrating. We're celebrating with you that you have given your life to Jesus. Maybe you're joining us tonight and, and you've, been, you've been struggling with the religious spirit and you say, you know what, tonight is the night that I want to break out of this. And, and tonight is the night I want to experience freedom. I, I want you just to, to, to put your hand um, upon your heart and I'm just going to pray with you. I, as I pray, I just want you to say, God, help me. Whatever area that you're stuck in, if you're stuck in the area of of not hearing the voice of God and you want to hear the voice of God, I'm just going to ask that God opens your ears and, and that you begin to hear His voice. Maybe maybe you have been trying to earn your salvation you want to break out of that. Or maybe uh, you've been like in that comfort zone and you've been satisfied but but you know you need to go deeper and farther. Or maybe uh, you, you have been kind of um, working against what God is trying to do. Try, you've been stopping the move, uh, the move of God, and, or 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 not allowing God to move in your own life, or or maybe there's been division in your life, and you bring been bringing division because you don't have complete understanding, or or you need more explanation. Whatever it may be, whatever wherever you're at, I just want to pray with you tonight, Jesus. God, you see, uh, you know all of our hearts. God, you know where we're at right now. God, I pray uh, for each of us, God. I pray right now that you would begin to, to open our ears to you, God, that we begin to hear your voice, that when we read your word, that we that the words would, uh, would jump out at us, God, that you would speak to us through your word, that we would hear your voice, that you would begin to speak to us through dreams and visions, God, that, God, if you want us to have angelic visitations, God, that we'd have angelic visitations, God. God, uh, however you want to speak to us, God, if it's through our thought process, God, may we realize, God, that it's you speaking to us. May we act on it. May we obey, God. God, I pray for, for those of us who have been comfortable, God. I pray, Lord God, that, that, that we push beyond our comfort zone, God. That we spend more time with you. We go deeper with you, Lord God. For those of us, God, who have been trying to earn our salvation, God, may we rely on the finished work of the cross, God. May we rely on what you did on the cross for each and every one of us, God. And may we know, Lord God, we cannot earn our salvation, God, but we just want to spend more time with you, God, that it's not out of works we do anything. God, forgive us, God, if we've been bringing division or allowed division to take place in our life, and because of the division, we haven't been um, spending time with you. We, we haven't been doing what you have called us to do, Lord God. Or maybe, God, we've been against the move of God because we don't understand what you're doing, God. Or we don't understand who's bringing the move, God. God, uh, or maybe we've stopped the move of God in our own lives because we don't have understanding or explanation of what you're doing, God. God, forgive us, God. And God, we ask that you would be begin to move in our lives, that you begin to move in our churches, God, where you begin to move in our homes, that you begin to move in our communities like never before, as we fight against the religious spirit, God. God, I pray that you would forgive us, that you would set us free from this religious spirit, God. Set us free, God. Set us free, God. God, I pray for those tonight, little Lord God, who have been caught up in tradition, God, who have been caught up in this religious spirit, God. I pray, Lord God, that you would break the chains, God, that you would break them free even now from this religious spirit, God, in the name of Jesus. 
even mindsets that have been set up against you because of because of, of, of viewpoints and things that they have been thinking and things that they have thought that are not yours. They're actually uh, doctrines of demons, God. We break it now in the name of Jesus. We break it now in the name of Jesus. Every area of our lives where the religious spirit is operating, I pray that you would reveal it to us, God. That we, you reveal this infection in our lives, God. And that you would cleanse us, God. And that you purify us. That you would make us clean, Lord God, so we can move so that we can see people come to know you, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, because of our thought process, because of our traditions, God, because of what we think is clean or unclean. We're not doing what you have called us to do, and people have been lost, God. God, forgive us for stopping the move of God, and it be, because, Lord God, we're caught up, and this is the way it's supposed to be done, God. Forgive us for causing division, Lord God, because we're stuck in, in tradition, God. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God, for not listening to your voice and going to places where you have called us to go but because it's not a place it's not in church God that, that we don't want to go and preach your gospel God forgive us God for, for being stuck in our comfort zone God forgive us God forgive us God I pray God that you would begin to break this religious spirit over your people over Trinidad and Tobago over the world God that you begin to shift and shake the church Lord God set us free God so that there would be a great revival and a great move of God right now in the name of Jesus I thank you God for what you are doing and what you are about to do God God I pray for those tonight God who are financi financially strain God. There's some of you tonight who haven't been working. There's some of you tonight who, who literally you're on pennies. You're on pennies. Like, like I, I see just, just like, like pennies. All I see is pennies. You, you basically have pennies left because you haven't been working. God, I pray that you would sustain them, God. I pray, Lord God, that you'd be their Jehovah Jireh. I pray, Lord God, that finances would come where they're not expecting it to come, Lord God. I pray that you would sustain the pennies, God. That you would multiply the pennies just as you multiply the fishes and the loaves, God. God, I pray for those even tonight who are sick, God. Those who, who, who um, have pains in their bodies, God. Those who might even even be watching and have COVID-19, we command the sickness to leave. We command COVID-19 to leave. We command pain to leave now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that your healing power would flow to on them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, God, that you would flow like never before, that you would speak, that you would move, God, that there are healing power. You said by your stripes that we are healed and we believe your healing power. Oh, somebody's getting touched right now. I feel it. Somebody right now is being healed. Somebody right now is being healed. Somebody right now, you're being healed. God is healing you. You just felt the, 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 the healing power flow through your body. And God is healing you. I... I Stop. If, if you had pain or and areas you couldn't move, begin to walk, begin to move those areas, begin to, to, to stand up and move and do things you couldn't before because God has healed you. He is healing you now. He is healing you now. There's people being healed right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for your healing power. God, we thank you for all those who are on this live and all those who might watch on the replay, God. God, I pray your favor. I pray your blessing. I pray that your face would shine upon them, God. I pray that your peace that surpasses all understanding would flood their hearts and their lives, that the joy of the Lord would be their strength, that they would feel your love in this time of crisis, God. And God, that we would move out of our comfort zone and we would grow deeper and deeper and deeper in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you, if you uh, enjoyed this uh, broadcast tonight, we ask that you would share, give us some likes, give us some hearts. Um, and we ask that, that you would go ahead and, and like the, our uh, Facebook page. And if God was speaking to you tonight, please share with us. If you have any prayer requests um, or, or any praise reports, if God healed you, um, share it with us. Listen, if you have prayer requests, and, and you, can, you can email us at livecurrent int at gmail.com or you can inbox us on the live current facebook page you you can go to about and you'll see a place where you can message us um and and you you can go there and let us know what god is doing in your life and how we can pray for you we'll be praying for you let us know of any praise reports that god is doing too um because we love to hear when god is moving in people's lives 
and and if you would like to if you'd like to um, sow a seed, or if even if you'd like to partner with us, partnership is a long-term thing, and that means that that you you want to partner with us to help us get the Trinidad and Tobago, and 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 help us to get the church off the ground in Trinidad and Tobago. If you'd like to do that, we're going to put the information up after this video. It also will be in the comment box. If you would like to just sow a seed, um, you can do so through Cash App or PayPal. We're going to put that information in the comment box, and we're going to also put up at the end of this video but thank you so much for for joining us tonight Th I, I just want to thank you for everyone who has partnered with us and and who has been praying for us and who has um given every church that has been partnering with us there's a, a church that that uh uh messaged me today and they're gonna start giving and we thank them for doing that we thank you for every church and every person who has been giving and and everybody who's been partnering with us you are part of the life current family you're a part of our team and we appreciate you we love you and we thank god for you we're praying for you and we pray that as you give that god will give you double that god will give you a hundredfold that god will multiply everything that you give and we thank you. Please keep us in your prayer as we're praying for you. You please be praying for us. Next week, <clears throat> we're gonna jump off of this topic. Uh, next week is Easter. We're gonna jump off off of this topic, and we're gonna talk about I had the power. And then uh, the following week, we're gonna come back onto this series uh, infected. But next week, we're gonna do a do a kind of a. Uh, Easter message and it's going to be an activation message instead of an alignment message um, but join us next week um, at the same same time Saturday at 6 p.m. join us next week thank you for joining us we'll see you later